I love technology. Um, and, and I think you can do powerful things with technology, and, and that's why I've called this Good With Code. You can do incredible things with te technology. You can help transform people's lives. You can give back to society, and we saw a lot of that today. And what I want to talk today a bit about is three things. Um, I want to talk about a couple of the projects I've been lucky enough to be involved in, uh, the Space Lab project, where we used uh, technology to inspire. I want to talk about something that we used, um, uh, a platform we created to educate. Uh, and lastly, I want to put something out, and it's currently something I'm working on that is hopefully a way of helping transform a country, this country. Um, so I want to give you a bit of a background why, why I love technology so much. And I love technology because um, in 1993, I was a 20-year-old graphic designer in Vancouver, and uh, I was just starting up. I had no clients, I had no business, I had nothing. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and these guys walked in, these two guys walked in, and they said, hey, you're a designer, you do branding, you do identity, you do logos, you do positioning. And I said, all of the above. And, um, and they said, we're launching an ISP. And I was like, oh, yeah, an ISP, yeah. And they said, an internet service provider. I said, oh, yeah, an internet service provider. And they said, you know, the internet, 1993. And I said, yeah, I buy internet all the time. You know, I'm, I'm interneting right now. <laughs> so, um, so what was interesting, though, is, is the internet was in Canada, um, obviously. It was, it was everywhere. But it was very early days. So I had to learn a lot about the internet in a very short space of time. Because we agreed a time, we agreed a price, and they were going to come back a week. Um, and I was going to present them some ideas of how they were going to launch one of Canada. Well, it went on to become Canada's biggest uh, internet service provider at the time. So what did I do? I went to a bookstore, um, as you did back then, and I got a book on the World Wide Web, an O'Reilly Associates book. And on the inside front cover, it had a floppy disk, and I put it into my Mac, and I installed the NCSA Mosaic browser, and I got online through their company. They didn't know that I wasn't online already. Um, and I started playing with stuff, and I started teaching myself basic markup language. Um, I published my own little page, I FTP'd it. And I realized pretty quickly this was a very, very, very powerful thing, because you could put a bit of yourself out there, and people could see it, and people could connect to it, and you could connect to their ideas. And it was an incredibly uh, sort of um, inspiring proposition. The page that I put out was my name blinking with a rainbow ruler above and below it and an animated envelope that said, contact us. So it wasn't a very good thing, but needless to say, it was, it was the start. So that being said, this is something interesting that we just uh, recently did in the last year, which was this idea of inviting youth, uh, 14 to 18-year-old uh, kids in school, um, to be able to um, effectively put forward their ideas um, and their thoughts. Um, and the best thoughts would, would effectively be voted on by the community. Um, and they would be sent in a rocket to outer space. And they would be live streamed back from the International Space Station to planet Earth. It was called Space Lab. And this is how we tried to inspire the next generation of explorers. And here it is. Um, and we asked a very simple question. We asked your experiment 250 miles above the, above the Earth for the whole world to see. What would you do? Um, and this is the launch video for it. Sometimes you do this stuff, and, and creative people are guilty of always doing stuff that they like, um, and they want to do because, you know, I love rockets, I love space, and all that sort of thing. And then um, we, we started getting stats back, and uh, viewing stats, and, and playing stats, and all that. And that video, in the first 10 days, got 20 million views. Um, the channel, you know, 20 million, almost twice the population of this country. Um, and the channel I'm about to show you, um, to date, has, over, has had over 50 million views. Yeah? So almost the entire population of the country, the UK, that I'm living in um, currently. 
Um, so, so I don't ask the question, you know, did, did, did I do this for myself? I ask the question actually, why didn't we do this sooner and why aren't we doing more of these things and to inspire these, these, this next generation of explorers? I want to show you something really quickly now, which is again, you know, it, it's all in the detail. We, we wanted to really dramatize the notion that you're going to take this idea in your head from your bedroom, from your garage, from your science class at school, and you're going to put it in a rocket and it's going to get up there. So we allowed people, we, we went into the Maps API and we allowed people to type in their address and launch a rocket from their home um, and you go into your street address and you launch a rocket and there's a little street view tile at the top and even the smoke billows out front of your front door and it's all about that suspension of disbelief that idea that you can change the world That's how you get into the website, and I think that's a pretty cool way of getting into a website. You know, I wish my bank let me go into my online banking like that. Um, anyway, so that's that's uh, <laughs> that's Space Lab. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was this idea of using um, technology as a platform for education, um, and you know, the internet's a pretty crazy, incredibly powerful thing. Um, and we have this browser called Chrome, um, and, it, and it utilizes all these technologies, HTML5, WebGL, sockets, all this sort of stuff that really propels um, and really pushes forward all the incredible things that you can do online. And we thought, you know what? People know that you can share and you can, uh, you can network and video conference and play. They know that you can do all that, but for the most part, it's trapped behind our screens, behind the screens of the devices, behind the, 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 the computers and the laptops and the tablets. Um, and the phones. And so we thought, wouldn't it be incredible if you can actually liberate this technology and you can show people in a physical environment what is actually powering it, what is actually making things move and how things travel. So we came up with this idea, which is Chrome Web Lab. And Web Lab is um, a physical exhibition in the Science Museum right now in London, and it runs for a year. And what it is is a series of experiments that explore different themes based on collaboration, on languages, um, uh, data transfer, all those sorts of things. Um, and the, the interesting thing is that you can actually go into the museum, and you can go in and you can play a musical instrument through a computer, but next to you, there's another computer that is connected to the internet, and there's somebody somewhere in the world who's logged on and they're playing right next to you. And it's that notion of bridging the digital physical divide. Um, and this is what the space looks like. And it was interesting because some people talked a bit about aesthetic today, and that was really, really important to us because we wanted to make it look like a development lab, an incredible scientific lab, but we didn't because this is a place that's frequented um, largely by children, and we wanted them to come in and, and run around like it was a playground. Uh, you know, th this is more reminiscent of um, you know, monkey bars in a playground as opposed to a, you know, a r and d development lab. So it's, it still had the credibility, yet it had the accessibility. Um, and this is the launch video for that. I'm going to take you through a bit of it now. So if you can imagine that photograph I showed you is what it looks like physically. Now, this is me logging on from the internet. This is me going into the web. All those little symbols, all those graphical symbols are people from all over the world who are accessing the website and accessing the museum. And upon entry, you're issued this thing, and it's called a lab tag, and that's your unique identity on the site. 
and you also get one in the museum if you, if you visit physically. And that's where you save all your experiences um, and your session and call it up and share it and do whatever you want to do with it um, on the lab tag and it drops you into this global community. So this is me accessing the orchestra from online. So if you can imagine, there are people, if there were people in there, they would be playing and I would actually be able to go in and log on to one of the four dedicated machines, there are eight machines in total, um, musical instruments, and actually play alongside someone from somewhere in the world. This is a teleportation device, we call it the teleporter. And what we did is we took three 360-degree uh, uh, live streaming video cameras and we put them in places that you could never access and you could only access through the internet. One's in a shark tank in Cape Town, one's in a um, miniature wonderland in Germany, and the other one's in a, in a bakery of all places in North Carolina. The last thing is called the Sketchbot. And what the Sketchbot does is it allows you to take a picture either in the actual uh, museum or on your webcam. It takes that data, it processes it, it turns it into a vector uh, drawing that allows for the computer to read it, sends it to a robot in the museum and draws your picture in the sand, sends it back to you as a video. Um, and the data tracer. The data tracer is kind of lifting the veil on, on the infrastructure of the internet and the web. And it, it reveals where images are actually located. It shows the distance they travel in order um, to come back to you and how quickly they do every time you do a query. Uh, and lastly, the lab tech explorer is that little lab tech that you were issued in the beginning that I showed you is dropped into this global community. And what it begins to do is it begins to connect people. So it connects people through the different um, actual experiments that they're playing on um, and the different connections they're making. As you saw, that last little drawing was of Australia because that's where all the people from Australia on that given day were actually accessing. Um, and, and it's interesting, we launched it in beta in July and we came out of beta two weeks ago and we've had three and a half million visitors online, which is, which is great. We've had 175,000 in the museum, um, but more importantly, they've generated two and a half million artifacts. Um, so all these things, their music that they've recorded, their images that they've captured, all that stuff, two and a half million of those from 196 different countries. And, and it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, lastly, I want to talk about a bit about this place. Um, and this idea I have called uh, Antikythera again. Because I think there's some natural fits. You know, you think about, um, let's say, German engineering, you think about Italian styling and all that sort of thing. And when you think about Greece, you don't necessarily think about technology. Um, I don't think the outside world does, at least. And, and you know what? I think they'd think again if they were here today um, and heard everybody speaking. But you think about agriculture, you think about tourism um, and that sort of thing. But do you think about technology? Um, but some people might know what this is. This is a kind of a beautiful rendering of, this, of the uh, Antikythera mechanism. And it's, it's cited as being um, the first ever analog computer. And it was used to calculate astrological positions. Um, and what's interesting about it is, it was, it, it, theory is, it, was, it dates back to uh, first century BC. And I, I don't want to mess this up because I'm not a mathematician. Um, but what's interesting about this is that technology, comparable technology with that level of complexity, uh, didn't surface again in the rest of the world until 1400 AD. So that tells me that 1500 years passed between that thing and everybody else. So I would say, you know, call them early adopters, call them uh, <laughs> tech savvy, call them whatever you want. I think somebody somewhere uh, was very well advanced in what we're trying to talk about today and this whole notion of um, technology at the heart of what we do. Um, so this is where this thought comes in about the idea of how you use technology to help transform a country. Um, and the idea is very much rooted in something that I see every day when I walk through Athens. Um, we, have a, we have a little home here, and I'm here every month, and I see a lot of this thing. And it's devastating, because it's not only devastating to the shop owner who, who's lost their livelihood, but you see this little symbol, this for rent sign, this for sale sign, and, and it's, it's haunting, because it's, it's almost like a virus. It's infectious, and it spreads, and, it, and it's uh, contagious for all the wrong reasons. And what it does is it demoralizes and it, and it takes your uh, confidence levels down um, and it doesn't make you feel that great. So even if you didn't have the shop, the people who live in that environment, above the shops, around them, that walk down these streets, if they have to look at this, it's a symbol of a bygone era and it says that the, that, that the, the country is grinding to a halt. And I thought, well, what do you do? Like, what can you do with that thing bar peeling it off a shop window? And I thought, well, how can you use technology to make it a better place? 
And I thought, well, you know what? At the end of the day, when you do peel back all that stuff, you're left with this. And you could argue this is a blank canvas, yeah? And it's, it's a nice one, if you ask me. Um, and I thought, well, you know what? You need a lot of money to renovate, and you need a lot of, you know, you know if you're going to knock down stuff and, and fix, it, fix it from the start again, it costs a lot of money. So how do you, how do, you do it with very little money? And I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if you used technology? And uh, David talked a bit about augmented reality, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if you could use augmented reality um, to actually create a layer over maps um, that actually allowed people, shop owners, and people who had these spaces that were sitting vacant anyway, they're sitting vacant anyway, to put them on this grid, to put them on this network, and offer them up to young people needing spaces to incubate their ideas out of. And this does two things, which is interesting. It allows for people who had sort of their business rooted in an old world to educate themselves and maybe take a stake in a new company. But more importantly, it transforms the entire landscape in the high street in every village across the country that has that problem with that sign, that for rent sign, into modern tech-savvy companies um, that allow for people to incubate and build and entrepreneurs and all that sort of stuff. So I did a little video that I wanted to show um, that shows you know, somebody walking down the street and they hold up their phone. And what happens when they hold up their phone? These little pop-ups come up, these little, these little, little Uh, pop-up window things pop up, and they say the name of the new business, um, and they say the distance to that business. And it was just an idea I wanted to put out. So imagine walking down one of these same high streets that you walked down the other day, and all of a sudden they're full of people. And they're not in, in the Café Nia and stuff like that, they're actually in there, and they've got their laptop, and somebody's provided national Wi-Fi, and everybody can just log on, and you hold your phone up and you can drop in and see what someone's doing, or if they need a hand, or if you can exchange ideas, if you can invest, all that sort of stuff. And it's very much, you know, how do you get that to turn into that? Thank you very much.